going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Acura Audio Garage channel. Today we are installing a backup camera and an Acura TL. This is gonna work for really any Acura, but we're gonna be doing it in the context of the Acura TL. And what's gonna matter here, it's kind of disassembly, but wiring is gonna be very similar from Acura to Acura. Before I jump in the video, I'm obviously gonna ask that you give the video a like and subscribe. It took a lot of time to get all this information together and put together a tutorial that you can easily follow. So in exchange, I'm just, I'm just in exchange, please give the video a like, subscribe. We always have content on your Acura. But all right guys, so when installing a backup camera, there are gonna be a couple decisions you need to make. The first one is gonna be the kind of installation you want. So the two ways I'm gonna to refer to installation are gonna be always on and reverse only. So reverse only means you're only gonna see the backup camera when you engage the gear into reverse. Always on, you can always look at the backup camera whenever you want to. Those are really the two main choices. There are a couple other things we'll cover in the video, but those are the two main choices you need to have in your head. Also, as a disclaimer slash notice to you, if you're skipping around in the video, make sure you're skipping to the parts that you need to watch. So we're gonna cover this installation in two ways, the reverse only and always on. So make sure you're watching the wiring tutorial for whatever application or installation preference you want and don't mix them up because you're gonna end up with wiring that doesn't work and you're just gonna end up confused. Choosing a back, all right guys, when choosing a backup camera solution, there are many choices to pick from. I'm gonna show you just a few that you have. So if you don't wanna replace the factory radio, but you still want a backup camera, you can use something like this. It's a mirror with an LCD monitor in the corner that can easily show you the backup camera when in park or when you want to see it. And you can see it has a mounting mechanism. So this will replace this mirror. You can see they're roughly the same size. We'll replace this mirror and you just have to run the wiring and you could have your backup camera up here. This radio, this car currently has no radio. Of course, the standard backup camera installation is always usually to a radio. Here you go, so here's your radio. So usually uh, your backup camera is gonna show on this display, on that display, or if you have an 0708, you already have a backup camera, it will show on your factory display. Now a big question that you will get, well a big question we do get, is if you have a 2004, 2005, 2006 Acura with navigation, you can add a backup camera to that factory navigation screen. You're going to need a piece from Nav TV, I believe it's called, it's about $300 or so, that will allow you to add a backup camera to the navigation system and that's a whole different installation but it is possible you can go that route adding a backup aftermarket backup camera to the factory navigation screen on a 2004 2005 2006 i want to say you're going to spend roughly in parts about 500 dollars to do so so it doesn't always seem like the right choice when you can replace the radio and add a camera for that same price for more modern features but that is a option you have if your car has navigation but all right jumping back into the aftermarket camera stuff all right guys so we're in the showroom i'm going to show you the different mounting mechanisms available and also the different camera styles available and then we'll go over some of the other um, options that you need to consider for your camera installation so you can see here we have different cameras. So I'm gonna call these um, ear, like ear camera, I guess like, the mounting mechanism for this is, is has ears. So that one has ears like so. This one you can see has similar ears and then this one as well. These are behind license plate cameras. So meaning your license plate is supposed to go over this and only show the camera. These are constantly, installed incorrectly and you'll see the whole black bar that's not the way these are supposed to be installed so we have this cube light camera and then we have this same camera just in this mounting mechanism so now i want to show you kind of what the mirror uh would look like if you were considering it so here you could see we have the mirror backup camera that's what it would look like so that's it on that's it off so you could see the reflection of the mirror and then once you do engage into reverse that's what the mirror looks like 
and it is engaged. Now there are other mounting mechanisms available. So these are universal. These you can kind of drill into any location. They have different mounting mechanisms. So like a very popular one is the third light, the third brake light backup camera for vans. So you replace the third brake light with another housing for a camera. The third brake light then goes on top of that and now you have a backup camera there. So that's a vehicle specific. These are universal. The TL does have a vehicle specific one and that's the one we're gonna be installing today. So it makes installation a lot easier. All right guys, so the camera we're gonna be installing actually looks like this. And the way it's gonna go on the car is it's going to replace this brake light I mean this license plate light housing and then just sit far down enough for it to be able to clear this. So we're actually gonna come in here and the brake light housing is right up in here. We're gonna pull this off, replace it with this and then run our camera wire for the installation. So this is gonna be uh, a pretty sweet looking camera. The only thing that you're gonna be lacking here is any adjustability on the angle. So there's no way to adjust the camera in any way. It's fixed in that location. And that brings me to my next point in choosing a camera, which is going quality, adjustability, resolution, IP rating. So overall, the quality of camera you're getting. So these are all iBeam cameras. They all have three year warranties. When you shop on Amazon, eBay, etc., you have these no name cameras that are often of poor quality, but they're cheap. But what ends up happening is within a year, they no longer work. Because of that cheap quality, you're installing something that isn't gonna last very long. So I do recommend that you look at cameras from brands like Boyo, Momento, Rydeen or Raydeen, Echo Master, and iBeam. They all stand behind their products. All of their cameras come with user manuals and installation guides. So you have a wiring diagram to follow and then all of the information you would need for the camera. So when you're thinking about camera quality, you're thinking about resolution. So all these cameras are gonna be, I wanna say like your standard 480 resolution. They might have the resolution written in different forms, um, so like TV lines, etc. But as you can see, the quality of these cameras isn't high def, but it isn't terrible. It's enough for you to easily see what's behind you. So, um, when you look on Amazon, sometimes you're gonna get a camera that looks worse than this. You don't know, it's always a gamble. With cameras from reputable vendors, they will tell you the resolution, the pixel sensor, its IP rating, etc. Things that are gonna be important to you online because its IP rating is gonna be really important, especially if you live in an area where it rains a lot or it snows a lot, you wanna make sure this thing is waterproof, it's gonna stand up to heat, so it's operating temperatures, etc. So, when looking and selecting your camera, you wanna always consider, again, the resolution. So how good is this picture gonna look? And there's two parts to that. How much, what kind of resolution can your screen actually display? How good is that going to look? And then what kind of uh, resolution can your camera actually output to the display and or capture? So you always wanna pay attention to that. Make sure you get a camera on. As you can see, this one doesn't look terrible. I would say this is like starting qualities. This is what you would wanna go for. Uh, on the lowest end. Then the other thing to consider is the viewing angle. So you could see up in that camera, you can see a lot of the showroom, but in this camera, you can actually see more of the showroom. And they're kind of aimed at the same direction. One's a little higher than the other. Here, I adjusted the other one. Um, but you could see that in this one, you can't see the poster to my left. So right here, there's a poster you can't see on this camera because of the viewing angle. On here, you can see that poster that I'm talking about on my left there. So the wider viewing angle, the more you're gonna be able to see. And that's something that might be important to you, it may not, but it's something that you should consider when looking at the camera you're looking to install. The other thing is these LED lights. So you could have IR lighting 
or LED lighting. Every camera is going to need a minimum light um, illumination to be able to show you a quality picture. So you want to figure out, okay, is my reverse lights going to be enough to have for this camera to be able to capture what it needs to, or should I get one with LEDs, or should I get one with IR lighting? The only downside to the LED lighting is if you do an always on installation, these lights are always gonna be on regardless whether you're in park, I mean you're in reverse or not. So that's something you need to consider. When we do always on installations, we tend to go with a camera with no lights just because you don't wanna always have those lights on. Um, it can wear down the camera faster. Some manufacturers don't even recommend that you do an always on installation. They recommend a reverse only installation. So it's gonna vary by camera. I know I've been talking a lot, but these are all important parts you need to consider. So just stick with me. The last one is going to be the parking lines. So here, no parking lines. You can see the camera has no lines anywhere. These lines are brought upon by the camera. So on this one, this line, those lines are because of this camera. As you can see them now, maybe a little clearer, they are fixed parking lines. What that means is you cannot move them, you cannot adjust them. So if you install your camera and can't angle it the right way, these lines will make no sense to your installation. One has active parking lines. So these parking lines can't be moved. They're not dynamic, meaning I can't adjust them to be bigger, smaller, angled, etc. What they mean by um, active parking lines is on OEM systems on OEM systems when you turn the steering wheel the lines will shift with whatever direction you're going so backup cameras aftermarket backup cameras have started to mimic that now so you can see that as I begin to tap this camera it begins to think that I am turning so it's keeping the outline of the car so to say which are these lines right here but the other lines as I tap the camera, it thinks that I am moving. And then once I'm done tapping, it's gonna reset itself as you can see there. So that is referred to as active parking lines. It's something that is sought after that people really look for in their camera because <clears throat> when they've had cameras in other cars is a feature in a lot of the newer cars. Now, the last part of the camera is the lines you can adjust. So if we go into settings here, we go into guideline setup. Oh, this is put in the wrong one. When you have a radio that has adjustable parking lines, you can move the parking lines around on the display. So I'd be able to touch this and then drag it out or drag it in. Those would be dynamic or adjustable parking lines where I can move them. So I'll be able to adjust how wide I want them or how I, uh, long I want them, et cetera, for my car. And then on top of that, I can still have the dynamic parking lines that will shift up and down. So if you're looking for something like that, it's built into the camera. Some radios have that functionality too. I know Kenwood's really allow you to adjust a lot of the parking guidelines, um, but that's the last consideration when choosing a camera. The last part, the really important last part, is installation accessories for your camera. So when you buy a camera, you sometimes get just this, just this right here. Sometimes you get this and this, so you'll get the license plate bracket and this bracket. Sometimes you'll get a whole uh, circular saw so you could dig a hole and then another mounting mechanism those are multi accessory mounts those are important if you're unsure how you're gonna mount your camera and they also are very helpful in different situations so you want to make sure that you buy the camera or the accessory that you're gonna need for your installation in this case we already covered we're using that license plate light camera but I also will show you what a license behind license plate camera looks like. Then the last thing is the actual wiring behind the camera running to and from the camera. When you're using a cheap camera, you're gonna get about 17 feet of wire, a really thick connector, and very thin cables. And I'll show you what I mean about that later. What you just need to be careful of is 
that you have enough wire for the run you're going to do. So it can seem like you have enough wire, but as you begin tucking it, zip tying, etc., it gets shorter and shorter and you end up with a very tight wire behind the radio. And when you finally put the radio back, it can cause it to be pulled out or not make a solid connection. Also with very cheap wire, sometimes you're trying to snake it, pulling it through the wrong place, you pull too hard, the wire may look like it's fine, but inside it's actually caught, been damaged and now it doesn't show you a proper signal. So that's why I don't recommend cheaper cameras. Spend the money, it's an investment, it's a safety feature. I'm sure you can finagle some way to add it to your insurance and save you some money. Investment for your safety and also just to ease your driving experience. So don't be afraid to spend a little bit more than you necessarily plan to just to get something solid that's gonna last that's going to be of quality, it's going to be easy to install, it's going to come with support and you're not going to be scratching your head and cursing the world out that this thing isn't installing correctly or going the way you want it to. But alright guys, I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to jump into the next part which is going to be the actual wiring. So we're going to look at wiring on a table with examples and then from there we'll move on into the car disassembly and how to get it all installed. All right guys, so here we have the iBeam TEBPCIR University camera. And you can see we have 170 degree uh, viewing angle, parking assist line, selectable, three year warranty, water resistant design. And then it also has those LEDs. So we're gonna use this one in a installation the way they suggest which this installation diagram right here is reverse only so it's telling you to put the red and black to the reverse lights and then it's telling you to put the video in and the red to the reverse switch so this diagram right here is going to refer to a reverse only installation so that's what we're covering first reverse only what this means is this will only show you the camera when you put the car in reverse. If the car's not in reverse, you can't see the camera. There's no way to view it unless the car's in reverse. Reverse only. So in this installation, we're going to use the reverse light as our power source. So this right here is our power source. Pretend it is the reverse light of the car. This is an example so that we can cover how to do this installation outside of the car first. So that's, when I turn that on, it's like this turning on. So when this turns on is when the camera is viewable and accessible. When this isn't on like now, you cannot view the camera. So that's the installation we're going for right now. So pretend this is the backup light inside the car. So this, when I turn this on, is like you putting the car in reverse. All right guys, so this is the wiring for reverse only camera installation so let me rephrase that this is the wiring for the installation type of reverse only so this camera you will only see when you put the car in reverse when this light is on the camera will turn on and your mirror will turn on if you're using the mirror installation as shown here So from the camera wiring, we have our red and black. Our red and black are going to our positive and negative. I'll show you the positive and negative in the vehicle um, later. It's gonna be a green and a black. The green's gonna be your positive, the black's gonna be your negative. This, are, this is going to be the leads from the reverse light, uh, from the reverse light pigtail, and I'll show you that in a second. That then, goes through this wiring part of it gets hooked up to the camera this has a, a line of where it's supposed to be inserted here's our actual camera then that wiring you're going to run along in the car you're going to then hook up the red wire that came from the camera wire this red wire this came with your camera to the power wire or the reverse trigger this is going to be a purple white if you're doing a radio i'll show you that next but it's going to be red on the mirror and then this will have two inputs but only one will be a female that's what you're hooked this up to so that's hooked up 
Then it just needs a ground, but that will cover later on. You're just gonna need to ground the other side of the mirror if you're doing a mirror install. But for this case, just pay attention. So reverse light, once I put the car in reverse, it's like flipping this switch. That means my camera is gonna turn on and it's gonna be visible on my mirror. So here it is. Um, there's the mirror, fixed parking lines. Here is the camera. Our camera is on. You can see there is no adjustable. Uh, you can bend this back and forth right here, uh, but it's not very adjustable. There are other cameras that are adjustable. This is just one of the examples. So this is the wiring for reverse only. Again, this is a wiring for reverse only. You're only going to be able to access the camera when the car is in reverse. I hate to repeat that so many times, but people watch the videos and they miss a lot of the things I'm saying. Sometimes I'm talking too fast, sometimes I'm just bad at explaining. So if I mention it multiple times, I hope that it will help get the uh, point across. So now we're going into drive. We switch the car out of, uh, out of reverse into drive. The camera turns off. There's no way for me to access the camera in the mirror. There'll be no way for me to access the camera in the radio. It is only accessible once I hit reverse and go into reverse. So now let me show you what this will look like on the radio. All right, guys, now we're looking at the wiring for a reverse only installation with an aftermarket radio. So you're gonna go camera You can see, I can't see the camera, it won't let me. I can only see the camera when I'm in reverse. So now I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna show you the wiring. So the red, the camera wire with that little red wire is going to your purple white wire, which is your reverse camera input. So when your car goes into reverse, 12 uh, bolts are gonna come out of this wire into the purple, letting this know, hey, switch to the camera view. What you're going to do is you're gonna hook up your power and ground to the backup light and this is going to simulate the backup light so i'm going to plug this in so i plug that in now my car's in reverse so now i changed into reverse i'm in reverse inside the car and now my um camera's coming up i can't exit or anything because I'm currently in reverse. This is the only time I can see the camera. I can't go home, there's nothing I can do. It's in reverse. Now I'm gonna take the car out of reverse. So I disconnected that, that means the car is out of reverse. It switched back to my regular screen. I can do whatever I want now, but I can't view the camera. So this again is reverse only. This is the installation that a lot of manufacturers uh, prefer and recommend as you can see from the wiring here just because having your camera always on with a low quality camera will kill the camera relatively quickly I've seen some die in six months I've seen some die in four months I've seen some last a year um, they do die faster when they're always on but if you buy the camera from a reputable vendor you should have no problem with it dying and if it does, that three-year warranty should help you get a replacement. All right, guys, for this next wiring diagram, this is gonna be referred to as an always-on installation. So you can always access the camera at any point whenever you want. This is going to be different on the radio. With the Bose Elite line of radios, this BV765B, you can find this on our website. We have a complete plug-and-play package. Um, it has front and rear camera outputs for power. So instead of the reverse light being your power source, your power source is now gonna be coming from the radio. So you can tie it in. Um, these have dedicated lines for each camera, or you can just always use the regularly accessory power for your installation. So your your radio may not have that front and rear camera output power, but it will have a regular red wire um, for accessory power 
and that's where you can hook up the camera so that's what we'll be doing here because this is very i'm going to try to keep this as universal as possible but know that if you have this bose radio you can actually use this front or rear camera output uh power lines they actually include them which is pretty cool but all right guys i'm gonna wire this up and i'll show you what it looks like all right all right guys so now we're looking at an always on installation the only issue with an always on installation is you're going to need more wire than what comes with the camera now i know you're going to try to tell me oh you don't need that red wire you could have used the wire inside of here this is for representation so it's easier to understand for anyone doing this so if you're going to do an always on installation know you're going to need about 20 feet of red wire 20 feet of black wire um, and then 20 feet of purple wire to be safe you can get away with using the red wire inside of this you can get away with grounding the wire locally so you don't need to run it but that purple wire you will need it's going to be your reverse trigger and we'll talk about that in a little bit but let me go over this one so this is an always on installation so again your camera's in the rear you made this connection you ran red and black wires all the way from the back of the radio because this is our power source in this case to these inputs on the camera side so these are very close to where you hook up the camera to this connector there may be about a uh, i want to say uh eight to ten inches away and you then run that 20 feet of wire back to almost where the camera is now whenever you turn your radio on so i just picture me turning the ignition on it's going to turn my radio on in just a second um that is now giving this camera power so as soon as my radio is on my camera's on now i can access my camera whenever i want so now i'll go into camera so now there is my camera so again in this case i'm not in reverse i'm just sitting in park i turn the car on i can view my camera the problem here is i need another wire not necessarily a problem but something else you need to understand is i need another wire to my reverse light or to a reverse source in the car to change this screen to the camera view when I reverse. So with the reverse only, I only could view the camera when I'm reverse. So that was my trigger. Here the camera's always on, but I need to wire that additional trigger somewhere else. So in a CAN bus vehicle, a GM, let's talk like something like a Tahoe, your family car, some sort of van, it's gonna have a CAN bus system. When you install an aftermarket radio, that CAN bus system interface for your aftermarket radio is going to tell you when the car is in reverse. So the installation is really easy. You can just grab the reverse signal from there. In the TL, you can grab the reverse signal from up in here, or you can grab the reverse signal, uh, of course, from the reverse light. I'll show you both, but that's something you need to keep in mind. So I'm going to grab that third wire so I can show you what I'm talking about. So here, let me show you the wiring at the radio real quick. So like I said, for this instance, we're not using this red wire that comes with it. It gets capped off, but you are running a dedicated red wire from the red wire of the radio and then a dedicated black wire from the black wire or the ground wire of the radio then you have one more wire you need to interface with which is going to be this reverse input so when we were doing the reverse only the reverse input and this wire get hooked together not here this wire doesn't get hooked up in this installation your reverse wire is going to go to your purple wire that i was talking about so reverse input gets your purple wire or whatever color wire you find and this wire now has to get ran to a reverse signal trigger so either the actual reverse light or some thing that will tell the radio to switch uh when the car's in reverse and the way the the way the radio knows to switch is because this line gets 12 volts whenever the car's in reverse so if you turn on the light the reverse light this a wire will have 12 volts it'll auto switch the radio but all right guys that's the wiring for always on it's going to require you to have the camera wire 
and then three additional wires red black and purple i recommend so that you can do an always on installation i don't recommend doing an always on installation with a mirror unless your mirror is very high tech that you can um disable the camera or run additional power lines it's going to make the installation a little bit i want to say it's going to make the installation a lot trickier if you use an always on installation on a backup mirror it's relatively simple with a camera i mean it's very relatively simple with a radio but with a mirror you're going to need additional you're going to need a more advanced mirror and it's going to need to have the right features and the right connections for it to work all properly that's why i recommend doing a reverse only installation with a mirror and with the radio you can do a reverse only or an always on installation now that we covered the wiring necessary for the backup camera let's start with the actual backup camera installation on the tl it's going to be very similar we're going to go over your options again uh, we're going to start with the disassembly so you can see what needs to come apart in order to get the backup camera installed and then we'll continue into the wiring and lastly we'll cover how this works with our accessories so you can install a new radio in your car and a backup camera as well also we'll be adding backup cameras to our store along with mirrors etc so let me jump to that all right guys to start the disassembly you're gonna obviously need to open the trunk if for some reason you can't open your trunk with the button like this car can't be opened with the button there is a latch up here Let's see if i can show you up there you can stick your hand and pull it to open the trunk so helpful helpful tip for all you guys that are kind of locked out of your trunk but all right so we're going to need to take this uh panel off it's going to require a couple of different things so as you can see we have these guys right here that are going to pop out we have a series of them all over the place this has a screw in it these screw off these slide off and i'll show you that along the way the first step though is going to be to open these guys you're going to want to be really careful when opening this up because it can easily crack and it can easily break i actually think this one over here it's not closed properly or it's broken um but i'm going to show you how to do that first and we'll go from there from he here on out you want to make sure that you have good trim panel tools available to you because they're going to save your life then you're going to want to have a trim panel removal tool and a flathead screwdriver to help you get these off without killing yourself but all right guys first let's start with this guy so this is going to be easier to get from here and you just want to see where you can start to pry it oh man it's so hard with one hand man ah oh, come on come on buddy there you go there we go come on last one please there we go so now that i got those off what i was actually releasing is those clips right there this should pull off you can see no broken bits thank god no broken bits here because this is how it secures itself to the vehicle and then you can actually pull this one off but just be careful because it is have a mechanism here to hold it in place but as you pull back it should come off so now that you got that one off, we can work on getting the other off. Um, and it's the same procedure. You wanna start from the inside and just push out. You got both off. So now we're gonna get started on these. These are real simple. You're just gonna twist them out. And they actually twist onto the metal here. So there's a metal hole, these twist into them. Same thing on this side. They're just going to twist out of that metal hole. Then these you can leave on or take off. They actually slide to one side and come out. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this on camera with one hand. Uh, but there we go. Yeah, yeah. So you pull this edge off. And you can see the holes here 
are uh, bigger on one side, so then that means you slide it over or slide it back. And that's how that comes off. So we'll do the same here. So the hole is on the outside, so we'll go on the outside, pull that hole out, and then pull this way and release it from its place. Next, we have this screw here and here. Um, and you wanna be careful when pulling off this cover with this piece. I'm gonna grab this screw now. Yep. So hopefully you can see that. It should be a Phillips. And it's just gonna take a couple of turns, nothing crazy. Be careful guys, you don't wanna lose that screw. And if you do lose it and you're looking for it in a garage somewhere, this is what it looks like. All right, got that screw off. Now it's these little clips. So you have one there, one there, one there, one there. Then you have one here, one here, one here, and then one there and one there. And then they are one here on the side. And then on the opposite side, we have that same one. So my trick for getting these off to get these out, you would think that you would just go underneath and pull them out, but really what you have to do is stick your screwdriver in this little uh, gap and then start massaging it up like that. And then once that's done, it's actually loose now and you can come underneath and pop them off. And if you're looking for them, this is what they look like. So they're really small, really delicate. So you wanna be really careful when taking these off. All right, guys, after you get all those clips out, this should be ready to come out on its own. All you're gonna have to do is just clear it over some parts. And as you can see, it'll come right out. And then you can just pull it off. It just has um, little wings holding it on. Put that to the side for now. Now here we have full access to everything we're gonna need. So we're gonna need to run a wire across this line and then we're also going to need access to our reverse light, which is right. All right guys, so the first backup camera we're gonna take a look at is this universal license plate camera. It goes behind your license plate. So obviously I don't have this plate on this car, so I'm gonna show you kind of what it looks like with this piece of paper. You can see it doesn't look bad because the bars are hidden by the license plate. You have some adjustability but not a ton of it, but usually this is more than enough. The only problem here is if you use a license plate frame, it won't fit correctly. There isn't enough of a gap here to use with a license plate frame, uh, unless you get really creative and cut it up, etc. And then the other obstacle you're gonna over, have to overcome is now you have this wire that you need to get inside the vehicle and there is no opening for you to do so there. So you're going to need to drill a hole yourself wire through and what I recommend is just a hole right about here just be real careful that you're not at a weird angle where you're gonna chip this up or take some of that off you just want to be right there so you can see I drilled my hole it's not the prettiest looking hole but this is just for a demonstration so now that I have that hole you can see it looks almost too big for the wire that I have such a small wire but the head of that wire is relatively big so you need to drill a hole just as big as this when you're using a cheaper camera you actually end up with two connectors you need to get this one through and this one through and another that's cut off here so you're gonna need a lot of a you're gonna need a bigger hole to fit this through so cheaper cameras also come with a little bit tedious installation that's why you really want one of those name brand cameras or a better camera that at least comes with a pigtail connector like this that will allow you to have an easier insulation. So this was to showcase that you would need to drill a hole and uh, snake the wire through. I'm gonna run the wire back. I'm actually going to use a grommet. So I'm gonna put this grommet over the wire and close that hole up a bit so that no moisture can really get through. And then you might wanna use some silicone lubricant as well to, uh, not silicone lubricant, some uh, silicone sealant to make sure that that wire doesn't move along with zip tying it. So let me get started with that. All right guys, so we got the camera on. We've got the grommet installed. Let me, uh... so you can see right there, there's the grommet. It makes it look a little better and it's gonna help keep some moisture out. So now what we need to do is snake our wire in here. 
and then start running it. So what I'm going to show you now. Camera, you want to make sure that you're considering for any leaks or water penetration. So they give you a nice uh, little uh, seal uh, gasket, I guess you can call it. And then the light, you have a choice of where you want to place it. You can either put it on this side, which really would make the most sense because it's going to be the most towards the middle, I guess, because here is going to be a little too far right. So we're going to go on this side with this one. Um, so it's more towards the middle so what we're going to do is we're going to take this light off housing from the back and with the gasket should come with it we'll apply the new gasket to this and then we should be able to just stick it in place all right guys so we got the old light out you're going to pull the actual light off of it and then um you're going to now uh apply the gasket to the um let me see what I can show you that quick. All right, guys, now that we applied the gasket, um, we're going to see I tucked it underneath there. So I'm going to now just need to watch when I insert the light to make sure that it goes in the proper way. But we got to get this into the car first. This is going to be hard to show you on video. So I'm going to try to do it here. This has a lip that's going to need to get inserted first into the metal. Then once this is inserted it should shift over a little this way and you should be able to push this up this locking mechanism right here is what will leave it in place after this is locked in place you can slide the light back in so i'm gonna i obviously can't show you in the in the car how that looks like so i'm showing it to you here that's what you want to look out for right, so when it's all said and done you get this nice looking installation it looks very factory. The factory backup camera is always in the middle, uh, but this looks pretty good. Uh, factory backup camera is actually going to be right here, but again, looks pretty good. Uh, no drilling required here. So the camera uh, wire actually snakes behind the um, little housing like I showed you. And then you're able to put the housing right back on and the wire is loose right here so it doesn't crush the wire or anything so now what we need to move to is um, accessing these wires so our green is going to be our uh, 12 volt positive when we're in reverse our black is going to be our ground and that's how we're going to hook our wires up i'm going to get this wire out of the way that was for the other camera. And I might have not mentioned before is these wire loops. So every camera, not every camera, most cameras are gonna have this wire loop. One's gonna be to kill the fixed parking lines. The other one would be to reverse the image or mirror the image. And or sometimes there's an additional one for the encoding of the camera. So you wanna pay attention to these. Sometimes they're labeled like this. Other times, like on this one, they're going to have no label, but the instruction manual will tell you what it's for. So in this case, we're not going to mess with any of these wires. We're gonna leave them as is. We're just going to now grab the signal that we need to grab for our uh, camera installation. Get access to this wiring. You can use traditional T-taps. Uh, it's really not a big deal. We will be looking for the pigtail for this so we can make a plug and play connector. But really what you wanna do is strip back some of the wire. So I'm gonna strip back some of this green wire. We're gonna strip some of the insulation back. And we're gonna do the same for the black now. So we got the black wire. Gonna strip some of that insulation back. So now you can see I have copper showing on both. What I'm going to do now is grab my camera wires and tie them into these. First only installation. So, so this is our power and ground. This is also our reverse trigger. So this installation is for reverse only. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel back some of this and peel back some of that. Here, you can solder. I'm not going to because I'm trying to make this guide something that um, anyone can follow, but you're gonna wanna get something, some kind of pick or something to help you separate these wires. 
come on. Both my wires have little holes through them. Let me see if I can get you zoomed in on that. So, if I look up, you can kind of see them. Both of them have little holes. I'm going to zoom back out now. But both of them have little holes, and what I'm going to use those little holes for is actually to feed the new wire through. So, these are the red and black wires from the camera. I'm going to take my red to my green. And since I had that hole, I can twist it through the hole now to make a secure connection. And the same thing here, I can put it in through the hole and then twist it around to make a nice secure connection. Now what I'm going to use is I'm just going to get a little bit of electrical tape tape them down and then a zip tie to make sure they're zip tied together so that okay so i'm just gonna wrap these in electrical tape nothing crazy you don't need a lot of tape wrap this in electrical tape once that electrical tape is on I just want to zip tie them. So electri electrical tape from heating and cooling can start to come loose. So we don't ever want these to come loose. Plus we want the connection to be secure. So I'm going to do one right over the tape on both. So I'm going to try to jumble them together. So as you can see, right over the tape like that. And then I'm going to do another one, pulling this back a little so there's no stress on that wire. right there so now our connection for power is made the next part is this connector now plugs into this connector from the camera so they're all together you might want to tape this it's up to you I suggest you do and then we can plug this back in and we can start zip tying this wire along the route so that this wire doesn't get pulled on or anything all right guys so now i'm going to show you how i've zip tied my wiring and i'm also going to start the always on wiring so here is the reverse only wiring that i showed you before we tapped the red and black to the green and black I've zip tied all my wires. I'm ready to start my run into the car. On this side, you can see I have all that extra wiring I was talking about. So in this time, we're only gonna wiretap our purple to the green, and we're going to uh, run power through these red and black from the back of the radio. So here we have four wires. We have the red wire on the camera uh, um, run, on the red wire on the camera cable, you can see it's taped off. We're not using that. So we're using a dedicated red, a dedicated purple, and a dedicated black that are gonna run into the cabin. And this is the wiring so that you always have access to the backup camera, no matter what, always on. But all right, I'm gonna continue with the disassembly of this side so you can see the way the wire is supposed to run. And then I'm also going to wire tap the green wire so you can see how your always on installation should go. All right guys, so here we're going to now take the green wire strip back some of the insulation. So let me So I'm going to actually put it the back. So there we go. So we'll take it, strip back some of that insulation. You can see some of the copper is exposed now. And then we're going to take our pick and we're going Put a hole in it like so so the picture go through the wire and then we're going to strip back our purple wire so you can see our purple wire stripped back and we're just going to insert it into the green twist it around apply some tape and a zip tie so i'm going to grab the tape the zip tie and then i'll clean this all up and show you what it looks like so now that i've tidied up 
the always on wire. And you can see that the only wire that is wire tapped is that green wire to this purple wire. And that's our reverse trigger. Uh, everything else is running from the back of the radio back here. So we're getting power from the back of the radio through this red and black. So now I'm gonna start with the disassembly of this so that I'm gonna start with the removal of this panel so you can see um, what is necessary. So we could zip tie this wire along this way, run it into the cabin and start running it through the floor trim and into the loca final location. This up, you're gonna need to lift here and then with that open pull up and it should just come right up it's just a series of clips holding it in you can see this one stayed behind so i'm just going to pull that one out myself covering carpet covering off you're going to have one of these guys here this is going to be a little tricky you want to get two screwdrivers and pry up on each side to get it up then you're going to have a couple of screw down um I don't even know what to call them, but a couple of screw downs that are going to be holding it down here and up here and over there. So you just want to get those out. You don't need to take these bottom two out because all we're really going to do is then pull this out and force it down like this. This should give you access to the locations that you need to run this wire and zip tie it along the way. All right, guys, so when we zip tie this wire, we're going to zip tie it along this way and down, and then it's going to go into the cabin through this hole back here. You could run it this way if you want or underneath, but the factory wiring runs this way, so we're going to go into that hole and out of the other side with a snake. We're here, ready to go into the cabin. What we need to do is snake it. So so we're gonna snake it in there. If you don't wanna snake it, you can run it behind here. There's a gap. This light sucks. But there is a gap. Um, can I? Yeah, there you go. You can see the gap there um, where you can run the wire through. It's not, it's not necessary to take the seat out. This is our demo car, so the seats are out. But if you leave this on, you will have to take this off to get this wire. But basically what's going to happen is with the proper snake, your wire will come out of that corner and down into here. So if you can get this seat off, you can get part of this trim off and get um, the wire where you need it to. If not, you can come from back here. Um, this was the gap I was talking about and run it along this side and down. So to get this paneling off, it's pretty easy. To get this paneling off, it's pretty easy. You're just gonna pry up this, and then you'll lift this up on the corner there. And then, wants to be annoying, then on this corner here, and this should release. This does have two clips, so you wanna make sure you grab those. And then this panel, you want to make sure you pull this out. You can see this broke. I don't know if it just broke now or if it was broken. Um, and it should allow you to pull this away from the vehicle. Just be careful. You want to make sure you take that motion that I took so that you don't break this clip right here. It breaks very easily. And now again, we have clips that are stuck in the vehicle. So I'm going to get those all out and put them in the panel. But again, here's where the wiring is coming from and the wiring that we want to follow. So here we have both wires ran. As you can see, we ran one of them up in through the hole that I was telling you about up there. And then the other one we ran, how I assume some of you will run your wiring just for ease is behind this panel like so. And then it will come out the other end here again if you use a proper snake here we have a really long zip tie you can get the wire to come down this way and not have to take the back seat off just the bottom piece um you could also stick a uh okay you could also stick a snake um taking the seat up up and underneath 
and then you'll see it on the other side. So you have multiple ways of getting the wire out without having to take this seat out. We just took it out because this is our demo car, so we were working on the back deck there. But uh, I'm gonna get all this wire zip tied, and I'll show you how to take this off, the next piece off, and then we'll be right at the uh, driver's kick panel. All right, guys, as we continue running the wire, we're gonna wanna take this trim off. To take this trim off, you're just gonna wanna peel back your weather stripping again. And then you want to be able to peel this guy back. So mine wasn't put in that well, but it has clips here and then it has a clip up top. So mine is out, but there's a clip up here and one down here. And then the rest is kind of held in with pressure. So you want to take care of that. Once that's free, you can start lifting up this guy. Keep lifting up. And it's gonna come up like so. Again, this has clips, so you wanna make sure you grab those. You wanna make sure you grab the ones that were in there. And now to take this part off, you're going to peel the weather stripping back and kind of just push it out. So you wanna make sure you peel the weather stripping here and peel the weather stripping back on this side. Then you can kind of just get your hand in here and just push out like so and now free it so here we go down here has like a mechanism that holds it so you just want to push it back there we go now it's free now you can wiggle it out either side I'm gonna actually push it that way and you can see it just fell it's out So you want to make sure you get this clip and this clip out. Um, that's really what hold it. And then at the top, it has pressure um, here and here, and then here and here. And then now we're going to continue our wire run down this way, all the way down, as you can see, up into that uh, fuse box area. All right, guys, so I got the wire ready. Here, we're gonna come up this way. You can see this has been kind of chewed up. I'm sure this car has a remote start or something funky on it, but um, we have one problem. So our reverse only installation is gonna reach, no problem. I still have plenty of wire left, but because of the cross we did back there for the always on installation, it's not going to reach so we're gonna to need to extend our wires and I'm gonna show you how to do that in case you end up in this situation you're gonna need is you're gonna need a video coupler and then more video wire they sell the extensions and then for your wire you're just gonna to need to add more wire here so I would say with another six feet um, actually yeah with another six feet we will be good to reach the destination we need to all right guys so here I've added the coupler I was telling you about so it's the video wire, a coupler, and then more video wire, and it's just six feet. You can find this on Amazon. Uh, you could probably find it at your local like uh, Best Buy or if you have an electronics store nearby, um, the coupler as well. Not obviously always on Amazon, but this is only in a situation where you run into where you're out of cable because either the path you took, like the way we took, we crossed over in the trunk, or because of, um, just the wire that was supplied with your camera was too short so this is how you can fix that situation again if we would have followed the normal way of insulation we wouldn't have this issue but because of the way we came with the uh, always on wiring it uh, was too short again our reverse only wiring is more than long enough for what we need so that's going to where it needs to this was just for the always on wiring that needed the extra length all right guys now you just need to pull this panel off it's going to have a clip in this corner a clip in that corner it's going to be situated like so you're going to pull this side off first then the other side and then just kind of uh, finesse it out of way now we need to get um so now we need to get um the wiring as you can see this has a remote start or something um across here and into behind the radio so I'm gonna take care of that now I'm just going to zip tie along the way and then place my wire where it needs to go 
All right, guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the mirror like I showed you. There's a tab in the back. You pull back, you get the mirror loose, and then there's a connection here that needs to be disconnected. So let's see if the camera, yeah, so that blue connector is going to be disconnected, and then you should be able to pull the uh, mirror out. To get this free, you're just going to stick uh, a pry tool in this little uh, uh, gap right here, and it should release this to come down. Um, there's no screws or anything else holding it down. All right, guys, so we're almost at the end here. And something I want to show you again is I want to reiterate our wiring. So here we have two setups. Um, we have reverse only and always on. So reverse only is you're only going to use the wires that came with the camera in the box. So that's that video wire and then this red and black wire. The red is gonna go to this green wire here and the black to the black. You're gonna tap both wires. You're gonna run this all the way back to the back of the radio or in this, can in this case, to our mirror. So our mirror hookup is down here. And here we have our reverse input, which is this red wire. So this wire here this wire right here is what we snaked from the back of the car to the front. This wire is going to plug into our video input and then we're gonna connect both of our reds. Our video input is in. Once we put this panel back, we can tuck all this wire away, but this is just to show you uh, how the connection is made. This is reverse only. This is going to the mirror in uh, the replacement mirror we put up, we also needed to ground, so we just grounded right here on a terminal. So now let me show you what reverse only looks like. So here we are, we're in drive, ignore all the lights. I'm gonna put the car in reverse, and you can see our mirror turns on, and our camera's looking at the ceiling right now, but our camera is on, and as you can see, we have these fixed lines that are on the camera itself. It's not the uh, mirror putting these lines on, it's the camera. So that white wire, we can cut to get rid of these or we can leave them on as is. I'm gonna close the trunk so I can show you guys kind of what it looks like um, that way. So you can see I'm gonna put the car in reverse and now that the trunk is closed, this is the view you get of the floor uh, behind us. Again, I can only access this camera when I'm in reverse. So this is a very common installation, backup camera to a rear view mirror like this. There are mirrors with more options. Some have a compass, others have larger displays. So you have multiple options. This is kind of the entry level mirror uh, that's gonna be your backup mirror and your camera. There are even ones that you can come in here and adjust these lines through the mirror. So just know there are a ton of options, DVR, et cetera. There's a lot of technology that are packed into these mirrors that you can utilize if you wanted to. Now what I'm gonna show you next is the always on installation. I'm just gonna get a radio in here so we can go over that. But remember for your always on, you would have to have ran a purple, a black and a red or three separate wires along with your camera wire to the back so that you can always view the camera whenever you want. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up the necessary wires. So I'm gonna try to put you somewhere here is the wiring harness for our radio. Here's one of our uh, plug and play wiring harness. This is only part uh, one of the two. So what I wanna show you is that we're going to now match up these and also incorporate these. So just so you know, your uh, backup camera on this Bose radio is gonna plug right into here. And then we're gonna go red to red hold on let me grab this out okay red to red black to black um and then purple to purple once these are hooked up we'll then match them to these use some tape in the meantime just for illustration purposes and then we'll go uh from there to show you the actual demonstration All right, guys, the wiring I'm about to do is going to be very hack, uh, very hacky. Um, 
this isn't how I recommend that you connect your wires. Um, this is for demonstration purposes. So it's the reason why I'm settling for wire connections this way. Um, just so you really get a good thorough idea of what is being done. So again, red to red, purple to purple. And to reiterate, this is the reverse input. So this is gonna send 12 volts to this radio when the reverse light is on. And that's the reverse light we got in the trunk uh, when we did the always on installation. And then lastly, we also need a ground. So we're gonna go black to black here. Because we just need to get ours ready. So the red, the red, and, and um, the red, yellow, and black, we're just gonna strip back. So again, red to red, black to the black. yellow to the yellow that'll give you the power you need now some of you more advanced installers and or people watching will um, worry about the amperage being drawn here for the camera it's only not even an amp so it's not um, something significant enough where we would need an additional fuse etc if you want it to be extra safe it is something you could add but it's not necessary. These cameras draw such low power that using the accessory wire from the radio uh, is more than perfectly okay. If you wanted to, you could fuse tap uh, the wire for installation. And some of the more advanced camera systems will require uh, power itself. Uh, but again, this is such a low level camera that it's not really that big a deal. And then lastly, We're going to go purple to purple and tape that up and then tape up our yellows. Then if we were actually doing an install for real, we need to match blue to blue, all our RCAs to the right RCA ports, etc. There would be a lot more to do, but again, this is just to demonstrate the use of a backup camera. So now I'm gonna plug in my blue connector to my blue harness, and I'm just gonna slowly put my radio where it needs to go. Again, this is all for demonstration, so please don't assume this is how we would install a radio. This is our demo car. This is how our demonstration is going so far. So let's assume our radio is properly installed. Now we can come in and turn the car on. Um, we'll let our radio load up. So here we go, our radio is coming on now. I think you have a good look at it from there. So in this installation, with this camera, we can view it at any time. So it's just gonna give a second before it shows us the feed. But here we go. Oh, we're aimed at the ceiling again. Let me just close that. So here we go. Uh, we're aimed now. We're, we're at level now. The only problem is you see these fixed parking lines. I can view the camera anytime that I want. So if someone's too close to me or I think I wanna see what's behind me, I can view the camera. This radio doesn't have the ability to adjust these parking lines. So it's gonna be something that it's gonna be fixed. As you can see right now, they're kind of useless. I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit more uh, down. There you go. So there I adjusted the camera a little bit more down. But as you can see, it's still those uh, lines aren't useful. So I'd recommend for our installation, we're gonna cut that white wire that's gonna kill these lines and we're just gonna use the camera as is and hope that we use a better radio next time that will help us adjust those lines and not have to use it just like this. All right guys, so here we are. Here's the wire I'm talking about. So this is the wiring for this camera, the plate camera. And what we're gonna do is we're going 
to snip this little we're gonna cut the loop in this white wire just like that by cutting that loop we have now deactivated the parking lines so we're gonna go back to the car as you can see now our parking lines are gone so now we can use the camera just as is if we had a little bit of a better radio we could actually adjust these lines in the settings but I don't believe this radio actually has that feature uh, but I'll just check camera yeah no so there is no uh, way to adjust the lines on this radio but there are other radios that will allow you to adjust those lines and then the other thing we can do is we can come in reverse now and it'll auto switch to that camera we'll go back to park it'll come to back so I can be listening to the radio switch and it'll automatically come on just like that and here's our other camera still coming on so uh, this is your always on installation you can always view the camera when you want to see it um, this is something that's not always recommended from the manufacturers but it is available to you remember you're gonna need constant power going to the camera and then that purple wire was just to tell this to switch the display whenever you're in reverse you could have grabbed that purple wire from a different location alright guys so with our accessories we just um, connected red to red, black to black, yellow to yellow. Now here's our wire for our reverse only installation. We have our red wire and the camera wire. So the camera wire on this is going to go to this port, to this port right here. And then this red wire is going to go to the reverse input or this purple wire. So here's where a little peop uh, a bunch of people might get confused. Why red to purple? That's just the way it works. Um, it's just the way this installation is going to go. So the little red wire that is coming off the camera uh, wire is going to go to the purple in your reverse only installation. So I'm going to tape these all up and then I'll show you what that looks like. All right, guys. So that was the wiring for the reverse only. Here's how it will work. So now you have no access to the backup camera when you're not in reverse only when we are in reverse does the backup camera engage and here you can see this view right here is the license um, plate light camera so what I mean by that it's this camera right here so this camera is what you're seeing this camera I showed you before this camera is what you're seeing right now and as you can see this is the amount of light it'll have when you're reversing. This is what the camera looks like, very clean. And then because of the angle, and then because of the angle of the camera, you also get a good view of what it actually looks like. So the lines kind of seem to make sense and it also lines up with the floor. The only thing is your car is obviously not this wide. It needs to be a little wider, but it works pretty well. And again, you can send that reverse only. You can send to a radio or to a mirror really up to you all right guys i'm almost done wrapping up this video i just got to show you how you're going to put this back it's pretty simple i have most of this car back together i know some of you're going to have a question on what mounting mechanism we use for the mirror if you want to do the crtl so here's the mirror here's the um, uh, mounting mechanism you're going to need and then you're also going to need to take the entire cover off to fit it correctly and then some other um trim panel removal to feed the wire where you need it to as you can see here's everything back together i still have that radio jammed in there a little ugly but you can see all our trim goes back together when you're putting this back together you're going to put this central piece back after that central piece you can put this piece back then this piece and then you're going to put this piece then last is going to be this piece and then the piece that goes underneath there and that's how you get your inter interior back together um in terms of radio camera selection you can view what's on our site our site will not show you anything that's not in stock so we might carry certain things that aren't in stock at this time you will not see them till they are in stock so i recommend uh just checking our website regularly we are going to be adding email notifications for when things come into stock just because of the way the 12 volt industry is right now Things are just out of stock. There's shortages everywhere. So it's something we're all dealing with. If you're interested in putting a 
radio, new speakers, new amp in your car, check out our other videos. We do offer plug and play amps for the Acura TL. So we give you an upgraded sub, the mounting bracket for it, an upgraded amp, and you can use your factory speakers to get a lot more volume, get a lot more bass. You can also uh, upgrade your speakers if you want to. We're trying to, we're starting to do speaker packages. You can see them on our website now. Um, they're just your entry level speakers, so nothing crazy. Just to replace these factory ones, get overall better sound, um, and be, you know, you, you're not using 10, 12, no, how, 17 year old, 16 year old speakers. Yeah, so um, newer technology, better speakers. If you wanna upgrade your subwoofer, we're now starting to do backup cameras. Something will include the mirror as well. We've always done the radios. Uh, we have amp harnesses to help you replace your amp or bypass your amp, whatever you'd like to do. So we offer a lot for your Acura TL, so make sure to check out our website. If you found this information helpful, make sure to give the video a like, subscribe. If you wanna turn on notifications, that's up to you. I'm not gonna be the kind of guy it's gonna be like, oh, make sure you ring that bell. I don't really care. I'm sure YouTube does, but I just trying to get the information out to the people who need it. Um, if you're looking for any of these products, check the description or our website. I'm now gonna just show you how to put the trunk back together. We'll go one more time, overview of the cameras, and then from there I'll sign out. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. All right guys, so you're gonna place the covering over, line it up, you're just gonna force it over these edges and then you want to put one or two clips in so that it'll hold it in place because what you want to worry about first is these guys right here so I'm going to just begin twisting this into place so you're gonna kind of force and twist and it should just start grabbing on and once you can't twist it anymore you know that it's in all the way same here you're just gonna push in and twist it'll even itself out and it'll stop turning like that. Now for these, you're going to identify which one's the edge, which is this one. You're gonna push all of them in on an angle, like not on an angle, but a, like this, where there, there's a gap. You're gonna be like, oh, why is there a gap? Because once these two are in, you can push this over and then push the final one in. And that's how these will go back in the way they're supposed to. So again, I'll show you on here. This is the edge, the one that goes here. So we're gonna put these two in first. Make sure they're really in there. Okay, and we're gonna shift it over. And now that'll give us the ability to put our last one in. So now that one's in, that's all in. So now what's really left is just putting these clips back. They kind of just basically put themselves in the hole. You're gonna put um it separated in like this so it's still out and then push that in that locks it in place and then of course don't forget your screw that goes right here you want to be careful not to break this when you were doing this installation so make sure that's not broken and that's really it there that is that's really all that there is to putting this liner back on all right guys so here it is the trunks all back together we have our covers back on our uh, liner all the back on and you can see you don't see any of our wiring looks very clean and then here are our cameras so here is the camera um that goes into the license place light this is the camera that mounts this is the camera that mounts onto the actual license plate it's supposed to go behind it so you get a view kind of like this um those are really your two options for this car i would say you can drill into the top and put a camera down but it'll make it a little harder if you're really looking for a camera that you want to adjust the perfect way i would recommend a license plate camera that has an alternating mount and i'll show you one in a picture in a second and that one really allows you to um move the camera up and down and angle it in any position so that it really is aimed at the floor at the perfect angle to have your parking lines look the way exactly you want them to.